Hello you bunch of sweaty bitches and welcome back to the awesomeness that is the Halo Foundry. I know just how excited you are for my mouth watering review, but before we jump balls deep into it like we normally do, let's get the elephant out of the way first okay? Because I'm sure that most of you may have noticed that I've been a little absent the past two months and I completely understand that that sort of behaviour is utterly disgraceful, especially from a world renowned channel like the Halo Foundry. But for those who want closure, annoyingly I don't really have any good excuses up my sleeves, but I appreciate you sticking with me throughout this time. I did take a little break of course to play some Halo Infinite so that excuse is like one of the months really. But before I knew it, the year was gone and it's already the end of February. Like this year has been gobbled up faster than a cock near your mum. But all I have to say to amend these bridges between us is don't you rub your pretty little heads because daddy is back in the saddle and he's not going anywhere anytime soon. But I'm sure that you'll also be happy to know that I've been continuing to collect Halo merch over the past two months and I've got tons of new things to review. Even though some of these things may be a few months old now, they're still worth me making a video on because you know, any hold is a goal at the end of the day. But anyway, with all that crap out of the way, let's get on with a bloody review. As today we're going to be reviewing the Halo Infinite Master Chief statue with grapple shot by the beautiful folks over at Dark Horse. Now this statue is 10 inches of pure delight and believe me that I say that this thing is ribbed for your pleasure because just look at all of that juicy detail. This statue depicts Chi standing on top of a decaying slab of Zeta Halo where he is perfectly sculpted in his new Mark VI Gen 3 Mjolnir. On his back is his trusty old MA40 assault rifle and with energy sword powered up in one hand and grapple shot bursting out the other, you know that Chief is ready for action. Dark Horse released this statue with a standard edition one which I have right in front of me here and an exclusive edition which is sold by Best Buy over in the US. The only difference between these editions is the energy sword with the exclusive one having the blood blade which does look pretty sweet if I'm being honest, but sadly, like I said, it's only US. But luckily for the rest of us outside of the US, the standard one, for me at least, is pretty banging. You're not really missing out on too much because they both still share the same epic pose. But of course, if you do have the option to get a blood blade, even if it's on a scalper, which is annoying, but either way, it's worth grabbing. But this statue is the second statue released by Dark Horse for Halo Infinite Master Chief, and the first one being released in 2020. I was hoping that they're going to do another statue and not just give us another chief, but thinking we'll get like Eshrim or even a banished brute or elite, so I was just a little bit disappointed seeing that we got another chief. But with that said, the pose on this new one, the one I have right here in front of us, is superior to the first. And that isn't just my opinion, that is your opinion as well. See, the first statue is epic on its own, but it's restricted because it's mirroring the cover art of Halo Infinite. But with this second statue, it's like Dark Horse's shackles were released. The pose on this thing is so disgustingly horny that when I lock my eyes with Chief's helmet, it makes me feel like a naughty energy coil, ready to be snatched up in Chief's arms, and believe me, I'm going to let him toss me anywhere. However, it is a bit of a shame that we have to have another statue with the assault rifle and energy sword, because I feel like we get those far too much. Just imagine how cool this thing would have been with a commando on his back and gravity hammer in his hand. Now that is hot. But with all that said, the grapple shot, for me at least, is a real storytelling piece here. And after playing Infinite and becoming one with the grapple shot, this resonates with me to my very core. As the hours that I have spent playing the game, I can guarantee you that most of my time was spent flung around in the air, or being dragged towards a grunt, promoting his wife to widow. So this statue is sort of a memento to the grapple shot in a weird way. What is great with Chief here is that his armour is looking just as amazing as it did with the first statue. See, Dark Horse must be creating these things with some game assets directly from 343. As comparing Chief here to his in-game model, they're basically spot on. So we are spoilt for detail all over this chap. There is a little silver dry brushing that has been applied to his armour, but it's only lightly applied and doesn't muddy up the green at all. So that is a fantastic thing and thank God. There are some oddities however though in the paint, especially on the chest I've got some random blotches of silver but it's not really a massive deal breaker to me even though it does look a bit odd. The tech suit underneath is just painted grey and black and without any purposely painted washes or dry brushing it is left quite plain but that is completely welcome for me as it leaves a really strong contrast between the armour plates. And then moving on to his visor, it is done exactly the same way as the previous statue, where we have this flaky sort of metallic orange paint on the base and with a clear plastic laid over the top. 
It's not the best visor effect out there if you ask me. Like it's nothing compared to what Jazzware did with the Spartan collection figures, but it still looks pretty great with some clear plastic applied. It gives it a sort of depth at certain angles. But now the grapple shot, there's really great detail on this little thing. The decals applied instead of paint, the red lines look so crisp. However, you need to be really careful with this thing as the cable is extremely flimsy. It does arrive in the box detached from his wrist, which is great for protecting it during transit. And you just have to wedge it into place like this once you receive it. All fantastic there. But with it being detachable, I think it is an absolute shame that we didn't get a pre-fired grapple shot included. That was so obvious to me. I understand it doesn't look as cool with it pre-fired and it's not as dynamic, but having that I would feel far more safer displaying this thing without that thin ass little rope thing to worry about. And before you say it, I am not an idiot, okay? I don't care to see handle my stuff, I am really protective over it. But I have cats who climb all over my things like dickheads, okay? And they will chew the living daylights out of this thing if I gave them a chance. But now, let's turn back to Chief and focus on that sweet ass salt rifle of his. For something that is not the main attraction on this piece, they have put in a lot of effort to make this thing look good. And it comes with an ammo counter, which seems rather basic, but if you see my other videos, you'll be surprised to see how many companies miss this thing out. Mine was applied a little wonky, but regardless, it is here. It is also great to see a little splash of colour with red for the dials and a yellow strip that was absent from the first statue. But that is probably likely due to the first statue being finalised before the delay. And then moving on to the energy sword. As I said, there is a Best Buy exclusive which comes with a red blood blade. So if you'd like to see my review of that one, just use your imagination, okay? Just pretend it's red. I'm sure you can manage that. So this right here maybe is one of the better looking energy swords out there, for infinite at least. You see, a lot of companies like to add this little bridge thing that I've mentioned before, connected in two blades. Normally with figures, not statues though. But I have moaned about it so many times and it is horrendous to see. I understand why they do it, though it just keeps it safer and having the two flimsy ones is really, you know, breakable. But it is such a pleasure to see that Dark Horse didn't see the need to include it here. I mean, like I said, this is a statue after all, so it's less likely to have it, but it looks far superior like this. One thing I did notice about the energy sword is that it must be an asset supplied by 343 for companies to use. Because I've started to notice a few other infinite energy swords have the exact same energy flow pattern on them. Some of them are painfully obvious that they're exactly the same, so they must have just received these things and slapped them on. But Dark Horse on the other hand though, you can see that they have the same pattern, but it's altered that it's a bit harder to make out. But if you really focus, you can see some of the same details. But don't worry though, I don't think it's a bad thing at all because at the end of the day it is the pattern for the energy sword. Why make one if you can get one from free for free? But it's great to see that Dark Horse decided to change it up to make theirs unique. And lastly for this thing we've got the base, which is the exact same base as the first statue, only replacing the one larger hex for the three smaller ones. And you know what? I hated this for the first statue and I hate it here again. It's the muddy black wash that's applied. It just makes it look a little bit rough compared to the outstanding work that's on the rest of the statue. I just think it's a bit of a shame that the quality wasn't carried over to the base, but luckily I don't tend to look at the bases though, I focus purely on the statue, so that is great there. The metal border and the hex lamps do look pretty good, it's just the mud that I'm not a huge fan of. And then just to quickly finish them off, let's have a nice side-by-side -side comparison for both statues. And this, uh, this thing right here makes my dick hard. Both of these together looks outstanding. I think the green paint might be slightly different between them, but the quality in the moulds and the overall paint job is just flawless. The only area where I might criticise comparing both statues together is that the new chief appears to be slightly smaller in scale. I don't mean the pose, I understand he's leaning forward in the new one slightly, but I mean the scale, so he's like he's 100% turned down to 90. You can see what I mean when comparing the helmets. But this of course doesn't ruin a new statue for me at all. It's just something that I can't help but notice when I've got them side by side. But there you have it, Dark Horse's latest statue from the Halo universe. Luckily the quality is exactly the same as the first statue, so no complaints there from me. And I do think that the pose of this new one is so, so much more better and so dynamic, which is something very hard to do with static pieces. And I know that I have a few issues, like I said, with the base. It's just really nothing that has stopped me buying it. And I highly recommend that you go out there and grab both of these if you haven't already. As this is likely to be one of the best Infinite Chiefs ever made. Full stop.
I do have the A Thousand Toys Infinite Chief, which I'll be reviewing very soon, and both of the Gaming Head statues on pre-order. So that's the Halo 3 one and the Infinite one. So we'll be doing reviews on all of them when they arrive, but with such huge price differences, I'm excited to see who could pull off the best Infinite Chief out of all of them, because Dark Horse, they have set the bar. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have this statue and what are your thoughts? Or are you going to be picking it up? I'd love to hear either way. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more weekly, yeah, weekly Halo Gear videos. Until next time, you bunch of pervs.